This is a cute little frog in a floaty. We previously discussed the intermediate value theorem, which told us if the frog moves from a point A to a point B, then he must have, at some point, been at all of the intermediate positions between A and B. In this video, we'll practice applying the intermediate value theorem to find roots of equations. Here is the intermediate value theorem stated in its entirety, and I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson introducing it if you need a more thorough review. Here are the problems we're going to do. They're from Stewart's calculus. In each case, we need to use the intermediate value theorem to to show that there is a root of the given equation in the specified interval. Here's number one, two, three, and four. Now in each case, the process is very straightforward. We need to move everything to one side of the equation so that we have something equals zero. And then all we need to do is plug in the beginning point of the interval and then the ending point. If we find that the function changed from negative to positive or positive to negative, then it must have at some point crossed zero, thus guaranteeing by the intermediate value theorem that there exists some solution to the equation in the interval. Let's begin with problem one. This is a polynomial that's already set equal to zero and we're on the interval from one to two. It's a polynomial, so it is continuous on this interval, so we can apply the intermediate value theorem. So what we'll do is plug in one, the left endpoint, and plug in two, the right endpoint. Point. When we plug in 1, we get negative 1. When we plug in 2, we get positive 12. Thus, by the intermediate value theorem, there must be a point C in the interval from 1 to 2 so that the expression on the left is equal to 0. There must be a point satisfying this equation because we see on this interval where the function is continuous, it passes from negative to positive. You can't pass from negative to positive without passing zero. At some point, it was equal to zero. And we'll do the same thing for problem two. We have this equation. We'll begin by subtracting one from both sides and adding x to both sides. So we have this equals zero. Now this is not a polynomial because it has a rational exponent with that cube root. However, it is continuous on the interval from zero to one. So the intermediate value theorem applies, and we'll proceed with plugging in the endpoints of the interval. When we plug in 0, we get negative 1. When we plug in 1, we get 1. Since this continuous function passes from negative 1 to positive 1 on this interval, by the intermediate value theorem, there must be some point in the interval so that this expression is equal to 0, which of course means that this equation would be true, at that point, so there is a solution in this interval. Problem three here is slightly trickier. Hopefully you know your unit circle. We've got cosine x equals x. We'll subtract x from both sides, so we have cosine x minus x equals zero. Cosine x and x are both continuous, and so we can apply the intermediate value theorem on this interval. Let's plug in the endpoints. When we plug in zero, cosine of zero is one, so we have one minus zero, and that's just equal to one. Now when we plug in 1, it's a little bit tricky because cosine of 1 is not a nice number. However, we do know that cosine of 1 minus 1 is less than 0 because 1 is between 0 and pi over 2. So if you know your unit circle, it's pretty easy. On the unit circle, the x values give us cosine values. It starts at a maximum of 1 when the angle is 0, and then we get to a cosine value of 0 when the angle is pi over 2. Now we're talking about cosine of 1, and 1 is between 0 and pi over 2, which means that cosine of 1 is going to be somewhere in this interval. Maybe it's the x value corresponding to a point that's right about there. Regardless, it's positive, it's between 0 and 1. So when we take cosine of 1 and subtract 1, we're going to get a negative number, which means that indeed this function does pass from positive to negative on this interval. So at some point it passed 0. By the intermediate value theorem, there must be a point C in the interval from 0 to 1 so that cosine of x is equal 
to x. Remember that our process is verifying a solution to this equation, but of course that's equivalent to this equation. So a solution to one is a solution to both. Let's move on to the final exercise. This is the hardest of the problems because natural log of x is just not as nice as cosine. We'll begin by subtracting e to the negative x from both sides. So we have ln x minus e to the negative x equals zero. These functions are both continuous on this interval, and so this difference is continuous as well, and we can apply the intermediate value theorem. So let's plug in the endpoints. When we plug in one, we have natural log of one, which is zero, minus e to the negative one. e to the negative one is positive, so zero minus that is certainly negative. Now what about natural log of two minus e to the negative two? Well, this is indeed positive, just like we'd hope. Here is an argument for that. Certainly, we know that the number e is between two and four. So e is less than four. Taking a square root on both sides, we have that the square root of e is less than two. Then taking a natural log of both sides, the square root of e is e to the half. So the natural log of that left side is just a half. On the right side, we would have the natural log of two. Thus, the natural log of two is greater than a half but we could make a half even smaller if we were to increase the denominator. It certainly is greater than one over two squared. So ln two is greater than a half. It's greater than one over two squared. Again, we could make the denominator bigger by replacing this base of two with a bigger number. E is a bigger number than two, so let's replace it with E. Then we have that the natural log of two is greater than one over e to the two. And of course, one over e to the two is the same as e to the negative two. Thus, we've shown the natural log of two is greater than e to the negative two, and therefore the natural log of two minus e to the negative two is greater than zero. So indeed, this function does pass from negative to positive on this interval, and thus, by the intermediate value theorem, there must be a point c in this open interval from one to two so that this equation is satisfied and thus this equation is as well. At this point C, the natural log of X is equal to E to the negative X. I hope you found these exercises helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and be sure to check out my Calculus One playlist in the description for more. I'm a secular and a secular